Welcome to the next episode of Wong Island TikTok. We are here today with Rohan Murphy, and we are so excited to have you today. Tell us about how you got started on TikTok. Well, I speak at schools for a living, and I've always tried to market myself and my business through social media. You know, when I first started speaking, it's kind of funny. Um, I would go to a school, and middle school kids would follow me or add me on Facebook. Then they gradually started to add me on Instagram. Now it's more about TikTok. Okay. So now when I speak at schools, I'll get home, I'll get a couple hundred followers on TikTok and just a couple on Instagram or Facebook. So it's funny how things change. So do you think that TikTok has changed your career path at all? Uh, definitely, definitely. It helps me really get my name out there. Um, I even book speaking engagements through TikTok because students will you know, comment on one of my videos on my TikTok and then one of their friends who goes to a nearby school will comment as well and they'll mm -hmm. say to me, how, how can we get you to come to my school and speak at, at my school? And then I'll tell them to just ask their principal or administrators. They'll do that and then I'll go to the school. So do, does the principal or I guess administrator reach out to you specifically or how does like that process look like? Well, a student will reach out to me on TikTok They'll say, please come to my school. I'll say, uh, yeah. it's not up to me. It's up to your principal. <laughs> They'll go to the school, ask their principal. Then their principal will usually email me, and then we'll set up a time and date. That seems pretty seamless. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, I'm, it's wild. It really is. I was, I'm sure <laughs> social media has made it so much easier now. Oh, yeah. Um, but just going back to pre-social media days, how did you even get started in this whole um, motivational speaking uh, space? Uh, well, I started doing motivational speaking back in college. I went to Penn State University, and I wrestled at Penn State. Um, when I was a collegiate wrestler at Penn State, my coach at the time would have me do motivational talks during our summer camp. And there was one speech that I gave that happened to be a parent in a nearby uh, or in the audience at a nearby high school. And um, he said, bro, how about you come to my school, give that same talk. And I was a little hesitant at first. You know, I didn't think much of it. I was just trying to motivate these wrestlers. But uh, I started doing some schools around the Pennsylvania area, around Penn State, and it just kind of blossomed naturally into a career. And how many schools would you, do you have an estimate even of how <laughs> many you've spoken at so far? Well, I know I've spoken at schools in 42 states. Mm -hmm. The eight states that have remaining are, let me start from the West Coast, Hawaii, mm -hmm. Wyoming, South Dakota, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're traveling often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been to Alaska twice as well. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. That's amazing. But we definitely noticed on your TikTok you definitely um, stay a lot, you know, home base on Long Island. Do you think, uh, do you have a goal, like, hitting all the schools on Long Island? Yeah, <laughs> there's 124. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a lot good job, on here. Good job, yep, yep. <laughs> I, you know, my goal is to speak in every district here on Long Island, so I'm getting close. I'm getting close. That's there are a couple in Suffolk that I'm missing, like a Sag Harbor, um... Maybe a couple others that I really can't think of off the top of my head. But I know Sag Harbor is one, but I'm getting close to it, though. I really am. So you were a high school wrestler. Um, and do people, when you're going to these schools, do they mention that at all? Because uh, you were pretty much of a superstar, but <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say superstar, trust me. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the teachers and administrators will know who I am. They'll remember me back in the day from my wrestling days. And uh, some of the students actually know who I am just from social media now. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'll go to a school and a kid will say, hey, I know you from TikTok. I'm like, whoa, Aww. that's wild. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're the wrestler from TikTok. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's me. Do you now make sure to share your social media when you do these motivational speeches? Or you go to these schools? Like, do you find it's important to also emphasize that? Or have you kind of changed your speeches, I guess, the way you talk to include, like, the importance of social media in it? Uh, well, I try not to mention social media too much at schools because, unfortunately, it kind of, it kind of has a negative connotation for some people, you know, mm -hmm. especially for younger people, what they could find or create on social media. So I kind of have to be careful with that. But uh, for the most part, I'll just say something towards the end of my presentation. Please follow me on social media, TikTok, at Rohan Murphy, uh, so-and-so. And, -so, and um, kids would go home and do that. So talk about, you know, a little bit about what you're actually doing at these schools when you are speaking. What are some of the topics that you try to motivate students on? Well, when I go to a school and speak, I basically just share my life story, how I overcame not having legs, and what it really has taught me about not just myself, but life in general. And I think a lot of people label me as an inspirational, motivational speaker, but I think I give kids something much more important. I think I give them a different perspective on life. And as you all know, as you get older, your outlook, your perspective, that's what life's all about. 
speaking of different perspectives, do you find that TikTok has kind of opened that space for people with different perspectives? Uh, yeah, you know, on social media, there's something for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it really truly is. So I've seen a lot of different speakers on social media, found them, uh, see what they speak about, try to understand what their message is that they try to convey to their audiences. And I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to evolve as a speaker. So I'm far from perfect, and I'm always just trying to improve. Talk about the other side of it, though. When, you know, we know that there are really good parts of social media, but there are really bad parts, too. So have you experienced that bad part, and how do you navigate that? Yeah, I mean... I think anytime you put yourself out there, especially on the internet, you're going to get some negative feedback, unfortunately, just, just the way it is. Um, you know, like I'll get some comments from strangers, you know, oh my God, I can't believe you don't have legs. That's terrible. If I didn't have legs, I would kill myself. You know, that's tough to deal with, but I know what I'm doing. I know how I'm living my life is making a difference, and I'm a believer in that. Do you ever respond to these kind of comments, or do you you know, just keep going in your positive message, spreading your positive message and just ignoring those types of or comments. Or does it kind of fuel your future content too? Have you replied to some of these con- uh, commenters and, you know, have you made videos talking about your experience in life? Uh, no, I try not to really give them any attention because I know that's what they want. Yeah. So I know if I just ignore them, that's the best thing to do. And once again, I know deep down inside I'm doing something special with my life and no one could ever no one could ever really take away my success and I'm proud about that. Going, you know, continuing on the topic of social media, we do also notice that you post a lot of your workouts, you know, what kind of inspired you to start that? And also, um, how do you do you have somebody who films these videos for you? Actually, do you have someone to kind of tag along with you? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I don't have an entourage. Trust me. <laughs> um, one person and uh, I just use my tripod. It makes it easier, obviously. Mm-hmm. And um, I, do, I love working out. It's my uh, it's one of my passions. I've been working out pretty hard since my wrestling days back in high school. So for me to go to the gym twice a day, it's no big deal. I know most people, they struggle going once a day. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but for me, yeah, for me going twice, that's nothing. Just who I am. So talk a little bit about your, your daily schedule then if you're, going, if you're trying to go twi- twice a day. Yeah. What does that look like for you? Well, I'm not going to lie. I have a lot of free time on my hands. You know, <laughs> I only speak at schools during the school year probably twice a week, which is a okay. lot for a speaker. I know it doesn't sound like much, but trust me, it is. And um, I have a lot of free time on my hands. And if I'm not speaking at school, I usually go to the gym early for a cardio session, maybe around 8, 9 a.m., and then uh, go back home, chill for a bit, maybe do some emails, uh, stuff like that at home, and then go back later in the evening for a lifting session, maybe around 5 or 6 p.m. And that's just who I am, you know. That's what wrestling made me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of lifting, we did a story a while back about an older man, 80 years old, who benches 350 pounds. How much do you bench? Oh, it's funny you say <laughs> yeah. that because my max lift ever is 350. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But always tell kids to keep, the, keep it in perspective because I only weigh about 120 pounds. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's almost three times my body weight. Wow, wow. that yeah. is very impressive. Yeah. Um, speaking of fitness, have you noticed this culture of like the fitness influencers on social media and has that, you know, kind of adjusted your fitness journey or do you always, you know, just keep your routine? Uh, <laughs> you know, when it comes to the whole fitness culture on, on social media, I don't really think I'm a part of that because I'm in such a different um, atmosphere when it comes to, you know, what I have to do or how I have to work out at the gym. Mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, Watching someone like myself work out is completely different than watching a different type of influencer, if you want to call me that. And um, I just think I give people motivation. You know, I really show them that there is no excuse why you can't be fit, why you can't be healthy, why you can't get to the gym at least once a day. I mean, if a guy without legs could get there multiple times a day, someone with legs should be able to just fine. Going back to your motivational speaking, how long have you been doing that now at school? Oh, I've been motivational speaking now full time. I would say for about 13 years. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. maybe a little longer going back to college, but back in college, I didn't really didn't think of it as a career. Kind of mm-hmm. just did it when someone reached out to me, kind of like a hobby. Do you remember the first school that you visited? Oh, yeah, the first school that I spoke at was a school in Pennsylvania. I forgot the name of it because it was so long ago. I really wish I remember the name of it, but um, I just remember sitting there in the gymnasium and uh, just getting ready to speak and just all of a sudden seeing all these kids filing through the gymnasium one after another, and I said to myself, oh, this isn't so bad. And then more kids would come in, and then more and more and more. I'm like, oh, boy, what did I get myself into here? You know? Was that the most nervous day of your life? 
Um, or is no, it up there? No, no, not really. I think I used to get more nervous competing in wrestling. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because you know wrestling, you, can, you can't really control the match because you can't really control what your opponent's gonna do. Mm-hmm. Speaking, fair. I'm in, in total control. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And how long do your sessions go for? Uh, when you're I, talking to people. When I speak at a school, I usually keep it to about 40, maybe 45 minutes. Because as you know, a typical class period here in New York for a middle school, high school is 40 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So most administrators ask me to keep it to a class period so that they could get the students back to their classes and whatnot. Uh, so I try to keep it to 40 minutes. But um, I would say I speak for about maybe a half hour, then play a video for another five minutes or so, and then try to do some Q&A for mm-hmm. the rest of the time remaining. And so what are some of the questions that you get from these students. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, is that a question? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, I'll say this: kids are very curious, and they have no filter. <laughs> Whatever is on their mind, they'll ask. You know. Oh gosh. Uh, are you married? Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> how do you work out? How do you get dressed in the morning? Uh, how do you take care of yourself? Just difficult, different questions about just everyday life. You know, how do you drive? How would you go grocery shopping? It's Pretty, uh, it's pretty funny. So how do you handle those kinds of questions? Well, I think one of the reasons why I'm able to be successful in speaking is because I'm just genuine, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just tell the truth. You, you ask me how I drive, I'm going to tell you. I use hand controls. You ask me how I go grocery shopping, I'm going to explain it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Doing this for so long, you, you know, we shifted into back in the beginning, I guess it was millennials in high school, and now it's the Gen Z. Have you noticed a difference in those, the generation of students? Uh, and maybe also how they're asking those questions. Yeah. 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 This generation, without a doubt, is just more into social media. Okay. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, so many questions for social media. Do you have an Instagram? Do you have a TikTok? Um, and sometimes they'll tell me about social media platforms that I never even heard of. Mm-hmm. I just heard about, um, I think it's called Be Real. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I'm, heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even used that yet. Uh-huh. So yeah. I know that there always is something new. Yeah, and yeah. These Gen Zs, they're on top of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just think it's really funny when they're talking about Be Real because the concept of it is like, oh, you need to be in the moment you need to be real. But... It's like you're still behind a camera. <laughs> it's just yeah. like you're stopping what you're doing in that moment yeah. to capture what you're doing, but you're still using social media. Exactly. <laughs> you're not disconnecting. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah. funny. Tell us a little bit more about, you know, your life on Long Island. I uh, grew up in East Islip, went to East Islip Middle School and High School. When I was in middle school, my eighth grade phys ed teacher, Ron Croto, got me involved in wrestling. He said, Ro, you can go out there, you can wrestle kids with legs. At first, I thought he was crazy, but um, he had me try it. I fell in love with the sport. That sport became my, uh, it became not just a sport for me, but it became a purpose in life. Now, I tell kids all the time that there are four Ps in life that we all have to go through. Purpose, passion, pride, perspective. That's what I call the process of life. And I think it all starts with that purpose in life, you know? You find that purpose, you get pride in yourself, you get a different perspective at the end of the day, and it just really just shapes you to be who you are as an individual, as an adult. But it all starts with that purpose. You all need to find a purpose in life. So are you to this day still wrestling or looking for opportunities to wrestle? Uh, you know, I don't really uh, wrestle competitively. <laughs> I'll go to a lot of middle, school, middle schools and high school practices and wrestle with their students. Uh, uh. When I speak at school, kids always ask me if I could maybe stop by practice afterwards and just mm-hmm. wrestle around with them because they hear my story and they want to see exactly how I would wrestle without legs. So when I go to a practice and I actually wrestle them, they'll say to themselves, oh, that's how he does it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty funny. A lot of the messages that you get, are they mainly from other wrestlers throughout, like, the country or Long Island in particular? Or is it kind of like a mix of, like, all kinds of students? Uh, no, I would say my messages, my DMs that I receive on social media, it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, diverse crowd, you know, boys, girls, athletes, non-athletes. Um, anytime I could get a powerful testimonial, I mean, that's what it's all about because as a speaker, your goal is just to reach one person. If you could just reach one person, impact that one person and make a difference in their life, that's what it's all about. Because as you all know, it's one life, but each life is priceless. I know you said you discovered this in college, but did you have like a dream before that? And then kind of when you started this motivational speaking, that became your dream job? Uh, You know, before I found speaking, I didn't really have a dream job, I would say. I went to school 
uh, for kinesiology, which is studying you know movement science, uh, mo- locomotion in the body. Uh, every, basically, every phys ed teacher has that degree. So mm-hmm. I was thinking about maybe going that route, being a teacher or a phys ed teacher at least. And um, you know, I found speaking, and I just fell in love with it. It just became my passion. You know, the great thing about speaking is that everything that I struggled with as a kid growing up, I'm able to express and tell others about it. So it's funny how the thing that really haunted me the most as a kid is now what allows me to be successful. That's growth and strength right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just little things, just little things. I get so many questions from students. It's amazing how, how many questions students will have for me. But the one question that I always get from younger students, it's a great question. A lot of younger kids would ask me, Ro, if you could have legs for a day, what's the one thing that you love to do? And, you know, that's a tough one because, honestly, there are a lot of things I love to do with legs. Maybe go off a walk on the beach during the summers here on Long Island. Maybe go off a bike ride with friends. Maybe try playing different sports like a soccer or football. But if I could do one thing and one thing only, I would love to simply be able to go somewhere in public like the mall or the movies, be able to walk around like all of you and just know and experience what it's like not to have every single person stare at you. Mm-hmm. Just once. Just once. And that perspective ultimately you know, gives kids just that perspective. We know you give a lot of advice in your motivational uh, speeches, but what's, you know, the one piece of advice you have for young Long Islanders in general? Uh, depends on the age. If they're, I would say, middle school, high school, I would say just pursue your passion. Whatever you want to do with your life, go after it. Um, at some point, you're going to fail. It's inevitable. Mm-hmm. But failing is just part of the process to ultimately become successful. So... Definitely keep at it. Don't give up. And um, definitely try to find, once again, your purpose in life, what you want to be great at, what you want to do with your life. Thank you so much for coming in and speaking with us today. And I'm really excited to see where your page takes you. And I really hope that you get to that goal of reaching every Long Island school because that would be absolutely awesome. Appreciate that. Appreciate (laughs) that.